Okay, we're, we're back uh, here with Cosmin Lehenne from Adobe, our next guest here at the exclusive coverage of HBase Conference in San Francisco. We're live. This is SiliconAngle.tv's exclusive coverage of the Hadoop ecosystem. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com, and uh, thanks for watching. So, uh, HBase Conference, tell us what you think uh, about the event and uh, so far, and what, what do you think about some of the talks? First, I was impressed with the number of attendees here, the conference. I think the first Duke conference I've been to, there were like, I don't know, three, four hundred people. Uh, while uh, this is the first age-based conference and we already have 600 and uh, a lot on the waiting list. Uh, and I've seen some, some really interesting presentations, uh, such as uh, the Facebook presentation this morning was, uh, was really inspiring. And uh, along the day, I've been I've been seeing very different use cases for for age base. Uh, we're also doing a lot of uh, work in this area, but uh, being able to to see all these people and what they're working on, it's really inspiring. Um, so you're at Adobe, so we're gonna get into that in a minute about what you're working on at Adobe. But I wanted to ask you, what did, what are you seeing here that's uh, jumping out at you on those use cases? I mean, I would agree that Facebook was very inspiring and really, really cool that they're sharing. I know they just went public and usually hardcore about not sharing stuff, so really thought that was really good good, uh, good form by, by, by Kartik. What other use cases are you seeing that, is, that, that you're learning about that's impressive? So, uh, I haven't uh, actually considering uh, HBase for, for example, for use cases such as uh, search indexing, like uh, full text search, and uh, it seems to be a, a, a use case that uh, people are, are uh, trying to invest in. Um, another one was uh, some some real-time uh, backends for mobile applications that that seemed to be really interesting. We're mainly doing uh, uh, real-time data storage and analytics, but uh, there seem to be other interesting use cases. Yeah, it's interesting as the community starts sharing their practices, and you can learn a little bit more there. And it's and I'm seeing names of companies here: Fidelity Investments, you know, Adobe, eBay. Google, Facebook, Twitter, Netflix, Amazon, um, all the main much tech everybody. players are here. Yeah. Um, and it's a and it's and it's a lot of production discussion. I mean I'm finding that to be something. Do you do you feel the same way? Like yeah, getting well, stuff in production? Yeah, we, we've been running uh base and Hadoop in production for the last four years now. Uh, so uh, I think we're uh, some of the veterans of, uh, of the technology, but uh, uh, seeing uh, companies such as eBay moving, uh, moving on age base is really interesting. I mean, we have, we have use cases generally uh, where uh, small to medium use cases with, uh, with age base, but I, I've seen some really large uh, deployments out there. And uh, yeah, Salesforce as well has, uh, has an interesting use case with uh, and a nice deployment. Of course, uh, it's uh, even though we've been using it for, for four years now, uh, uh, seeing uh, what everyone else is doing is uh, is interesting. Yeah. So let's talk about what you're doing in Adobe. So four years, you're veterans in the space. Obviously, you know, batch, um, you know, that produced good work back then. Um, take us through the evolution of your environment because now um, real time is a big part of the conversation <laughs> here, um, and this is not possible a while back. Uh, just even a short year ago, so um, you know a lot of maybe some custom deployments, but going full production like Facebook is impressive. Um, take us through your your evolution from four years ago. Yeah, so I think four years ago I was uh, asking people from other teams to to lend us servers so I could build the first uh, Hadoop cluster. So uh, there was that. Uh, so you were begging for some machines. Yeah, I, I was I was <laughs> actually begging for machines because I needed to, I, I had some some big data use cases and I, I wanted to to try it. Uh, and then we we started uh, providing s internal services based on on Hadoop and age base, mostly age base. So. Uh, we initially we, we we realized we can't scale our MySQL uh, uh, deployment to to fit so many uh, so much data. We we had a use case with 40 million user profiles, so we we decided we're going to use HBase. And uh, starting from there, uh, we starting started using it more and more. So we uh, then we used to index uh, image data such as uh, images on our, some of our online offerings. And uh, then we started doing analytics on the data. So we did some machine learning, and then uh, we, we figured out we need, to, we need some fine-grained access besides Hadoop for machine learning, so uh, HBase was, was, again, a good fit. And then we, we just provided the, this type of service internally for other, for other products. 
So uh, right now we, we have both a data storage system and an analytics system built on top of, of uh, Hadoop and HBase. And the real-time story, uh, of course, uh, for some of the use cases we've had that uh, on, from the beginning, that, like the, the real-time data stores. But for, for analytics, that's uh, somehow new to us as well. So uh, what, we, what we did initially, we, we started running a, a smaller MapReduce jobs and then just moved toward just doing it in real time. So what's been the big evolution for you? I mean, is, is there a point in time where you say, okay, this has really changed the game a little bit? Go back, what year did you say, okay, HBase is going to be really much more of a production environment uh, for you? Was it four years ago? When did HBase really become a key product? Was it four years ago? So four, four years ago, we, we started uh, using it in production. Uh, in the meantime... HBase. HBase, yeah, HBase. We, I think we... I mean, That might have been some of the early... Yeah, I think we, we still have a cluster which we, we've never upgraded after that because it's been running and then we're, we were phasing it out. But uh, it's, still, it's still running uh, version 18 of, of, of Hadoop, so it's, uh, it's like Asian now in these times. Um, the Computer History Museum. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> at one point, I mean, we were building these internal services uh, and at one point we just switched and uh, did only this storage and processing of uh, uh, distributed data. So uh, I, I'd say probably 2009 was, was, uh, was uh, a, a, a flexion point, so to speak, and uh, when we, we did everything with, uh, with Hadoop and HBase. What are the biggest challenges that you've overcome with the complexity of, obviously there's some programming involved and some, there's some tech here, obviously it's open source, but still early, it's still early in the community, and even today there's big holes, and you can drive a Mack truck through these holes, um, and you got to kind of fill them up. So there's yeah. nobody else. So, so you got to write your own code and kind of get yeah. that back. When with with our uh, some of our first deployments were actually backed by by MySQL. So we had both the, the data both in in, in HBase and in MySQL. So we would have been able to switch uh, from one to the other. So data safety was uh, was one of the uh, the first thing that we we wanted to nail down. Uh, we we could have downtime, but we. Would never lose. That was data. a mirror, not a replication. Was it replicated, or was it just a mirror? It, 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 it was a lazy mirroring. Yeah, it's uh, we, it, we would take backups and then we would restore them in the other system. So, uh, but that was initially because we didn't trust the system enough, so we could uh, we could only rely on that. But and after that, we we started doing our own testing. So uh, some of our tests would uh, we would just go in the data center and unplug machines, take disks out of machines, and so on, and then get back to uh, to the console and uh, maybe fix the bug. So uh, we, we, we've done that in the past. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of it's work. It's a lot of brute force. I, I'm happy we're, we don't need to do that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what are the challenges you see today? So going forward, uh, the world's mobile, it's cloud, big yeah. data is analytics. Um, it's becoming much more mainstream in the business side, as well as on the application developer. So what's your, what do you see as the, the challenges and the opportunities? So, uh, I mean, strictly speaking about uh, age-based challenges, uh, our biggest problem right now is that uh, you've got to be uh, uh, what what we call a DevOps to operate it. So one of the challenges is to be able to actually uh, give uh, an entire environment to, to the operation people and let them handle it. And uh, so we could actually focus on developing stuff on top of it. So uh, uh, in terms of uh, use cases, uh, moving towards uh, Providing backends for for mobile mobile application, I think, is a challenge because it changes the way people interact. You don't have you don't have a website. We, you have a lot of people uh, maybe texting or, or 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 doing some other types of interactions uh, among the, themselves. What is your take on the whole discussion around MongoDB, Cassandra? There's different approaches. You got Neo 4J, J4, whatever it's called. Um, so there's different approaches. Obviously, there's just politics involved in some of the open source communities. Yeah. But in general, HBase is obviously related to Hadoop, so it's kind of buckled, bundled together. Um, but also, early enough where it fits some use cases, but it's fresh. Uh, is that an, an issue, or is it more of just the community? You know, what's all the hubbub about this versus Mongo versus Cassandra? <laughs> every, every now and then we, we, uh, we end up having uh, this type of conversations. Uh, when we started using HBase, we, uh, we tested the Cassandra and Hypertables as well. That was before the NoSQL term was even kind. So uh, we, we, had to, we had to test this, all the systems, there weren't so many back then, and we chose HBase, uh, and it worked for us. I think it was a, it was a very good choice. Why, why now, did it work for you guys? Uh, basically because uh, uh, 
and probably mostly because of the community that you have right now around HBase because it could have been a good system without the community and it would have been a lost investment, right? Because we, you don't want to, th that's why you're using open source, but because you want to rely on, on, on the entire community. So in terms of community, it's definitely, it, it was a winner. Um, and uh, with the community comes the performance improvements and all the features and everything. So uh, when, when I compare HBase uh, with, uh, with other system, that's the first thing I'm, uh, the, the first thing I'm, I'm looking at. Uh, now, in terms of features, uh, of course, there are other, cool and good systems out there. But uh, I don't think there's any other system that can uh, store so much data and be so uh, reliable with so much data than, than HBase is. So, final question for you. What do you see happening for HBase in the next year? A year or two? A year or two with HBase. Uh, so, I mean, there's a, there's a stuff that everybody is asking for, like uh, uh, secondary indexes and, and, and so on. But uh, what I would hope to see for HBase in, in, in a year or two is to uh, have easier deployments and basically have it, have it running on its own. Basically being, being smarter about the way it handles everything behind the scenes. So uh, I won't have to keep tuning it and so on. So it would be a self-healing system. Uh, it shouldn't be too smart in, in, in this area because you still need some control, but uh, there's a lot of stuff that you, you shouldn't do. So I'm checking some questions we have on Twitter here and, and um, getting some DMs from people saying, hey, you know, John, good questions. Ask some tougher questions about application developers. Um, not necessarily you're, you're selling to them, but you're one of them, right? So you're a computer scientist. Um, my friend wants to know, um, I love HBase, now I'm paraphrasing, it's 140 characters. Um, love HBase. Good stuff. I'm so busy, it's just too hard to use. What's out there for me? I want to really start jamming on coding. I'm an application developer. I love what HBase can offer me. What's out there for help me long? With so H the question is basically saying, hey, I love HBase. I want to use it. I want to do what Facebook did. I want to play with it. I want to develop on it. Um, and I want to take advantage of someone else's success. What, so, what's out there right now to I make mean, it a little easier to code? To, we, uh, strictly speaking, with HBase, there isn't much out there. Uh, HBase is a product which is uh, currently being used and meant to be used by, I don't know, let's say, uh, advanced users. Uh, but what I know and what I've heard, and I, I, I of course, I can't talk about uh, any details, I know there will be platforms that will offer uh, this type of service. You know that to be true? Uh, yeah. You heard some <laughs> I, things? I heard some, Come on. some, th some things, yeah. So, <laughs> but, but even, even so, I mean, I'm not sure why anyone would, would say I, I need to use HBase. You don't need to use HBase. If you need HBase, you just use HBase. Otherwise, you can just use a service. And uh, when I'm thinking about services, there's, uh, there's uh, Amazon has a lot of services. And then if you, if you, if you really need to, to uh, I don't know, hold your own destiny, then you, you, can, you can use HBase. But before you know you need so much data, you, I don't see... Well, well Continuity is building a managed service. I know Jonathan Gray is working on some things and some others. Yeah, jo Jonathan Gray, yeah, he's, uh, he, he's doing something in this area. And I, I, this is the kind of stuff that I'm expecting to, to see growing and, and um, probably be able to use in a well, year or What two. would you suggest as if for someone out there building a platform to advance the development? of and, and increase the inbound migration of more community members. What kinds of tools are needed? What are the kinds of features and, and, and minimum, minimum requirements to kind of get that next level of developer to come in? With, in the context of big data or? HBase. Uh, HBase. Uh, Taking so, advantage of the benefits of HBase. So, I mean, I, I, let, me, let me make sure I, I, I'm getting this right. Uh, in terms of tools, uh, Cloudera builds already a, a really good distribution of Hadoop with HBase in it. So uh, you, can just, you can just take Cloudera's distribution and Cloudera start Cloudera Manager using. works great, saves a lot of time. Yeah, so, uh, so and they also offer commercial support. So uh, may, maybe these aren't exactly tools, but you have a good distribution and you have the support, so you can start, you can start using that. If you want to, if, if you want to use HBase. Uh, besides that, I mean, there's a there's a good community. But strictly speaking about tools, I don't. I, I still 
thing that uh, we're lacking a lot in this area. Yeah, I think it's true. And then we've been talking about it with other guests as well. Um, final question, how does Adobe feel about this movement at HBase? Is the mood inside the company feeling positive? Um, you were begging for service four years ago. Well, where are you now? And what's the state of the uh, Adobe philosophy? I mean, we're, we're sponsoring this event, so I guess that, <laughs> that speaks for itself. Uh, we're moving towards services more and more every day with, uh, with, the, with our new Creative Cloud offering and everything. So uh, we have uh, uh, acquired a lot of uh, companies that are in the services. So uh, in general, uh, I think there's a, a really good feeling about, about Hadoop. Uh, HBase is somehow uh, uh, not that well known internally, uh, it's our team and probably I don't know three or four other different teams that are using it. But we have some we have some really important products on HBase. And uh, just to give you an example, this year we've deployed five clusters. So uh, we have nine clusters out of which five were deployed this year. So there's definitely a lot of growth in this area. So and we're looking to 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 build more on top of that. So uh, how how Adobe is looking at everything big data related? Uh, I think. It's looking, looking very interested in, in, in this area. Okay, Cosman, thank you so much for coming on theCUBE, Adobe, doing some work. Congratulations for sponsoring this great event, first ever HBase conference. Um, really a groundbreaking moment. Again, the community's phenomenal. Uh, congratulations on your four years, making servers, to now to really being a leader. Congratulations. We'll be right back with our next guest here on Side the Cube on siliconangle.com, siliconangle.tv. Exclusive coverage of HBase Conference. We'll be Thank right you back. Thank you for having me here.